In this section, we're going to look at the theory of supply. Just as the demand curve represented the behavior of buyers, the supply curve is going to represent the behavior of sellers. A supply curve shows the quantity supplied at various prices. That is, the quantity supplied is the quantity that producers are willing and able to sell at any given per unit price. And we can see again that the quantity that farmers are willing to supply of mushrooms depends on the per pound price at which they can sell them. So for example, we can see that if the price of selling mushrooms is $20 per pound, then sellers or farmers are willing to sell 145 pounds. If the price drops to $17.50, then farmers are willing to sell only 144 pounds. When the price drops even further to $15, then farmers are willing to sell even fewer, 141 pounds. So we can see that there's a relationship between the per unit price and the quantity. Unlike the demand curve where that was a downward relationship, for the supply curve, it's an upward relationship. The higher the per unit price, the more willing suppliers are to sell a good. Just as in the case of demand, the supply curve is showing us the quantity that sellers are willing to supply only as a function of price. But the quantity that sellers are willing to supply is a function of other factors as well that we're holding constant on a static supply curve. And if any of those factors changes, we're going to move the entire supply curve, just as we did with demand. So we're going to distinguish between the notion of a change in the quantity supplied, that is a movement along a static supply curve, and a change of the supply curve itself, that is a movement of the supply curve either to the left or to the right. An increase in supply is depicted as a rightward shift of the supply curve. That is, an increase in supply means that at any given price, the sellers are now willing to supply more units of the good than they were before. A decrease in supply or a leftward shift of supply means that at any given price, sellers are willing to supply fewer units than they were willing to supply before. Now, what are these other factors that can shift the supply curve? That is, what are these other factors that the quantity supplied depends on? So we'll go through them each in turn, but just to get an overview of them, these are input prices, that is the prices of the goods used to produce the output good, the prices of related goods or services, technology, expectations, and the number of producers. So an important factor that can move a supply curve is a change in input prices. Inputs are the goods and services that are used to produce another good or service. For example, inputs in the production of mushrooms might include the labor of the farmer, the soil and land that's farmed, and the tools that are used in farming. If the prices of any of those change, then the willingness and ability of the farmer to sell mushrooms is also going to change. A decrease in the price of an input, all else equal, is going to increase the profitability of the farmer or of the firm more generally. And this is going to encourage more supply. If the price of an input increases, then this is going to decrease profits and it's going to discourage supply, meaning that the quantity supplied is going to reduce. So for example, what's going to happen to the supply of domestic airline flights if gasoline prices drop? Well, if gasoline prices drop, then the domestic airline flights stand to gain more profit from offering these flights, and they're therefore willing and able to supply more of them at any given ticket price. Just as we saw in the context of demand, changes in the price of related goods or services are going to affect the quantity supplied. The important thing to keep in mind here is that the inputs that are used in production have opportunity costs, that is, they could be used to produce different outputs. For example, a corn farmer might also be able to use the same labor, land, soil, and tools to produce not corn, but soy. 
So if there's a change in the market for soy, for example, if soy's output price becomes higher and it's more profitable for a farmer to produce soy, they might reduce their supply of corn in favor of producing soy. There are also complements in production. So for example, in the market for lard, it might be important to keep in mind what the prices of pork are since lard is a byproduct of pork. So if pork's price increases, that might mean that there's more lard available and can be supplied at a lower price. Just as in the case of demand, changes in expectations are also going to affect the supply curve. Specifically, sellers will adjust their current offerings in anticipation of the direction of future prices in order to obtain the highest possible price. So I remember when the Star Wars prequels came out, my brother knew that his collection of Star Wars action figures from when we were kids were going to be worth a lot more money. That means that when he hears that these prequels are going to come out, he's going to be less willing to supply those to the market and be more willing to wait in order to obtain a higher price for them after the prequels have come out. And lastly, just as in the case of demand, a change in the number of producers is going to move the supply curve. As producers enter and exit the market, the overall supply changes. Entry implies more sellers in the market, meaning that at any given price, there's a higher quantity supplied. And exit affirms implies fewer sellers in the market, meaning that at any given price, the quantity supplied drops. So for example, as more firms enter the solar installation market, the number of solar installations available for sale at any given price increases. So we can look at this visually by again considering a market in which there are two producers and see how we can sum up the individual supply curves of those producers in order to get the market supply curve. As in the case of demand, we're going to do a horizontal summation in order to go from the individual supply curves to the market supply curve. So let's look at the supply of soy. And let's assume that there are two soy farmers me, Homa, and Rajiv. So we can see that at a per pound price of $1, I'm willing to supply 20 pounds to the market, and Rajiv is willing to supply 10. So the total market supply at $1 is 30. Again, a horizontal summation at a price. When the price increases to $2, I'm willing to supply 30 pounds to the market, and Rajiv is willing to supply 20, so we get a total supply of 50. So in summary, the supply curve is trying to organize information about the price of a good and the number of units that sellers are willing to supply. So we can interpret it one way at any given output price or selling price, how many units of the good are sellers willing to sell? Or we can think about it as at any given quantity, what is the minimum price that sellers are willing to accept to sell the good. Because we're modeling in a supply curve the quantity demanded as a function of price, when any of the other factors that determine the quantity supplied, that is input prices, the prices of related goods, expectations, or the number of producers, when those change, we're going to see a change of the supply curve itself. So now that we've analyzed the theory of demand and the theory of supply, we can put them together to see how equilibrium prices and quantities emerge. There is no reason why everyone shouldn't have access to the very best education. Welcome to Calculus One. To introduction to astronomy. The introduction to philosophy. To statistics. Microeconomics. Psychology. Let's get started. <laughs>